Hello guys, I'm Spicy Bill. Welcome to the first ever review of a Master Grade Kit uh, on this channel. Uh, you know, you the guys know my preconceived notion about these Master Grade Kits. I had quite a few bad lucks with uh, some prior builds. In fact, I had some bad luck building this kit as well. And I have experienced some issues. However, uh, to stay objective and to be completely fair, uh, I think most of those uh, issues are actually my own fault. So if you watched my last video, I was very upset about certain things. Some of it are justifiable. Some are, you know, just me being in a bad mood. <laughs> so I do apologize for that. And uh, we'll get into the review. So this is the Bandai Master Grade 1100 scale version 3.0 of the RX-78-2 Gundam. Now, every time when I say Master Grade, um, and when I say 1-100 scale, it just feels so weird. You know, I always want to say something, uh, you know, it's, every time that, that, like, that scale just kind of doesn't compute in my brain. But anyway, uh, this kit was released in 2013 and retails for 4,500 yen in Japan. Uh, that runs to be around 40 US dollars. Um, I think in Japan you can get this kit as cheap as 25 US dollars. And if you can find it for 25 US dollars, I definitely would jump on it. Uh, despite some major flaws on some of the parts, uh, it's still overall a very, very nice looking kit. Okay, so anyway, let me tell you what I think about this kit. Basically, uh, this is essentially an upscale, uh, real great. Uh, RX-78-2 yeah it's a it's a master grade that trying to be a real grade it's got lots of details a lot of problems that you would expect from a real grade kit are also translated into this form uh, and that's the biggest problem with this kit is because uh, instead of trying to be a master grade is trying to be a real grade and that is very problematic also like to thank my friends uh, David for, uh, well technically this isn't a sponsor video, this is a commission. So he paid me to build this kit and he gave me like, you know, a year to get it put together because, you know, he doesn't want me to rush it. However, I did end up building this kit uh, within a, I think a 20 day time frame. Yeah, I took some breaks. But anyway, yeah. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the instruction manual. I build this kit at night, like when I come back home from work, and sometimes I'm either super tired or I'm just really in a bad mood. But either way, it's not too bad. Okay, so here we have the history of the RX 78 2, and here we have all the variants. We have the G3, we have the RX 78 2, and then we have the Gundam Alex. And somehow the Gundam Alex has relation with the Ashimar. What? And then uh, the Theta Gundam. Interesting. If you can read Japanese, I uh, probably know what's going on here. Here we have the uh, uh, the history of the uh, kits, of the uh, how this evolved into the 3.0 kit. Basically, I started out in 1995 as the first Master Grade RX 78. Dash 2, 2000, uh, they come with version 1.5, and then we have the Verka in 2002, 2005 we've seen the one year war version, which I think it's kind of like a variant of the Verka, maybe a completely different mode, and then we got the 2.0 in 2008, uh, the 2.0 is, I don't know, I don't know what to say about it because I've never seen one in person. Then we got the 2.0 uh, G3 version 2.0, and now we have the 3.0. And immediately after they release uh, this guy, the 3.0, they released the Origin version. Uh, the Origin version is actually super sturdy. You know, if you don't want to deal with loosey goosey parts, uh, it's less detailed, but it's a much much so more solid kit. That's that's the definition of a master grade right there. I, I did some uh, investigation and I. I learned that the, uh, uh, what's that, the Origin version, the Gundam the Origin Master Grade version of the RX-78-2 is uh, superior when it comes to posability and durability. 
but it just don't have the uh, you know incredible amount of detail that this one has. And we have some more uh, information on the kits here. We got a 2.0 Zeta Gundam, and then uh, the O double Zeta goes all the way back to 1999. However, we have the double Zeta Verkan now, and that's actually a very very good kit. Well, for the most part, uh, Verkan kits are usually grenades, according to experts. Uh, they look good, but you know for. Uh, for the most part, you just have to, uh, you know, they're, they're just good for display purposes, that's it. You treat them like a statue. But the Double Zeta Verka isn't really a grenade. It's actually something you can do something with. So, uh, here we have the assembly instructions. Very simple. The core fighter, this is the thing I built first. Now, I did manage to uh, allow the uh, missile pot thing to open up. It's still a pain in the butt, you gotta get in there with a hobby knife, so I don't know if I'm gonna do that in the review. If you guys saw my uh, you know, build video, you kinda get the idea of how those things opens up. Okay, and then uh, assembling the body, I mean if you watch my uh, uh, build video, you, you kinda know how this thing is put together. Okay, and uh, yeah, we'll talk about those uh, Emotion Manipulators SP. Absolutely hate them. Realistic decals. Uh, I would say most of it is good except for the joint parts in the elbow. And we have the Renzo, uh the backpack can kind of open and stuff like that. We got the body, we got the leg, magnetic coating. That's what I use uh, for this kit. Uh, magnetic coating joint parts, that is. Okay, so that's the, uh, and you also can use the Gundam LED if you want the eyes to light up. The weapons, and yep, there we go. Okay, and here we have the decal sheet, obviously. I used up most of it. I didn't, I kind of want to use this unicorn, but this is a unicorn, right? Or a Pegasus. Either way, it doesn't matter. And then I left some of the I did add it one special touch right here. If you see the knee right here, I added a water slide decal of the armor symbol. And here we have the level over parts. Most of these are just uh, parts from the uh, uh, 2.0. Yeah, they actually use a runner from the 2.0 kit. And then these are the standard joint parts. Let me show you guys real quick. So you have the option of uh, using these in place of these. All these, uh, you know. Right there. It's really not a big deal. Okay, and then uh, we have the uh, mini miniature figurine of Amuro. Uh, I, I will paint this, but you know, uh, later on. Uh, the owner told me uh, I, I can paint it or not paint it, doesn't matter. He doesn't really care about those miniature. Here we have the adapter for the uh, action base, and we have the beam saber effect parts. Yeah, these are typical beam saber effect parts. You get them mostly with uh, Master Grace, however, you sometimes with other, uh, uh, hmm, seems like I need to clean up these effect parts. But either way, sometimes you do get them with uh, larger high grades. Here we have the Core Fighter. All decaled up, looking very nice. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. Get this part to, uh, you know, flip out. It's not easy, but I think I can do it. Ah, there we go. So this thing just opened up, and you can see the missile sort of in there. It's really not a big deal. Okay, and then we have the landing gear, which are clear plastic. I don't know why. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter. Nobody's going to see. Not many people are going to use it anyway. Okay, and then uh, to transform this into the uh, core block, basically what you do here is you flip the seat. So you can see the pilot is looking forward. Well, Amuro is looking forward. You push that in. Close up the uh, winglets. And then you flip this. The wing would automatically... Uh, and then here's a core block for And you can actually uh, plug this in there. I'll show you guys. Okay. So there's a core block, you know, something you would expect from a 
master grade. However, this function is also available on the real grade kit, which is uh, quite surprising. So like I said, this guy is pretty much a uh, master grade that's trying to be a real grade. So it's got some issues, obviously. Very loosey-goosey. Oh boy, uh, I feel like this whole midsection is just going to fall apart on you. The legs are super solid though. I have to give it that. Uh, the arms are solid. However, uh, well, we'll eventually get to that. I'm going to be so ranting about those arms. Uh, the accessories are very nice. I mean, overall it just looks very, very nice. I really have to give credit for the uh, aesthetics on this kit. It's absolutely amazing in that department. However, uh, when it comes to posability and durability, this is when, where the kit falls short. So definitely, I wouldn't say this is a total grenade. I would say like, you know, it's just a master grade that has, has suffered similar issues as a real grade kit. Uh, yeah, you know, I wish uh, they would sacrifice the details and give us more structural integrity so that, you know, it's uh, it really uh, stay, stand up to the master grade. Uh, standard of being like you know rock solid and stuff like that that's what I expected when I was building this kit uh, when I was building the legs I was like yeah this is actually really good I really like it uh, and then I started building the uh, torso and I got to that core block and I'm just like not really feeling it and then I got to the shoulders and yeah things are just getting like it just it just kind of went south on there all right, so anyway, for accessories, uh, we got these uh, hyper bazooka right here. We got a tap that you can attach to the back skirt. You can actually close that up if you don't want it to be exposed. And the hyper bazooka is very nicely detailed. It's got a lot of part separation. Uh, the bill is pretty much the same as the uh, real gray. It's just a blown up version of that. Uh, we got a handle right here. You can plug this into the hand. Uh, if you not, you can close this up. Uh, you don't have... Uh, yeah, the magazine is not interchangeable, so, well, it doesn't really matter. These are the ammo, the rockets. Uh, and that's it. The handle you can articulate like that, so that's pretty cool. It's got, it doesn't really have a sight. And, yeah, these parts can be closed up if you don't want it to be connected to the backpack. Let's go ahead and flip that down. So there's a hyper bazooka. And then uh, we have the shield. Shield is pretty nice for the most part. It's got quite a few gimmicks. Uh, I don't like these uh, hands or these emotional emotion manipulators. They look kind of oversized for the grandpa. But either way, I don't think he's that distracting. He just looks like he's got like, you know, disproportionate hands. Looks like he's using hands on the Kotobuki uh, frame arm or something. Or like a third party hand or something. Anyway, I'll, I'll talk about these hands later. Let's go ahead and take a look at the shield. I've got a handle right here. This thing is kind of loose right here on this track, so it's a little bit disappointing. Uh, we got a connector point right here where you can connect this to the backpack. And if you, uh, I don't know why they did this. I think they do this very often with the master grades, so you can double stack the shield. So if you get another one of these shield, uh, you can push this thing through, like here, and that let you uh, double stack the shields. It's uh, yeah, and then you get another one, and then you stick it right through it. So, it, it's something very common, something that the RX-78 does. Uh, we never seen this kind of gimmick in the high grade. I don't think we'll ever see that gimmick, but it's pretty cool. And then uh, you have these uh, closing and open section right here. But you will never see in the high gray. I don't remember if the real gray has that gimmick, but it's nice. It's nice to have these gimmicks. So make the shield like you know more uh, less boring. Because usually with shields, I just don't really care. You know, I I I, I don't really uh, display my kits with the sh with it holding the shield, even though I should, especially on that origin uh, gym guard custom. That thing has like the uh, most iconic shield there is. Okay, well, it's also got a connection point right here for the backpack. So you can uh, attach the shield to the backpack if you want. Yep. 
There we go. Let's plug that in right there. It looks all right. And like I say, you know, that waist is very loosey goosey. And we have the beam saber. So the beam saber here, we also got that little tab in there. Push that in. And then uh, it can hold it in the hand. So the hand also got these tabs like that. Basically, the idea is to uh, mash, you know, the tabs. And then uh, it can hold on to the uh, accessories. Like so. Just gotta make sure, you know, it's lined up properly. There we go. Then you got to uh, mess around with the manipulators, which are definitely not fun. Yeah. Okay, so I guess it's time to uh, rant about the hands. Uh, each uh, the well, the fingers are individually articulated, so you know you got pretty good articulation at every single joint. However, they do pop out because. Uh, the knuckles are ball joint, so they can come off very easily. It, it's a very sturdy hand, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, I, I really don't like this design. I wish they would have give us options so we can swap out with like more simpler hands. But you know what? It is what it is. It works for the most part. So I have to give it credit for that. So there we go. Uh, I only have two pairs of hands, so you have to deal with these Emotion Manipulator SP. Okay, and then right here we have Beam Rifle. See, most of the, the Beam Rifle is actually sourced from the 2.0. We got a new part here for the handle to use with the Emotion Manipulator SP. Whatever that is. Such a stupid name. And then uh, you have the handle that you can articulate. And obviously you can use uh, this emulsion manipulator to, uh, you know, uh, do like the two-handed pose. Obviously you can move the side, we got some stickers, blah blah blah, and that's that. And to get the weapon out of the hand, it's very simple. Let's go ahead and just get this gun off, off of his hand. Just mess around with the fingers. And pop right off. There we go. You can see. Same thing. Same technology with the tab. Tabs lying up with the hand. Or the emotion manipulators. And then uh, this thing has the option. You can move this section right here. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt. But here's another uh, connection point. Uh, if I can even get to it, kind of, I'm kind of disassembling. Oh, there we go. So we got this tab, and this tab lets you uh, attach the gun to the uh, back skirt. Let's see, like that. There we go. That's not too bad. Okay, now you can see uh, what I'm talking about. All the loosey goosiness of this shoulder section. Let's go ahead and take the shield off the kit and let's go ahead and uh, get rid of this beam saber. Alright, let's go ahead and close this up. Take apart the, uh, take away the beam saber effect part. Get this thing to go back in here. There we go. And let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, pseudo core block so you see here this is a they give you like a secondary core block if you don't want to display it with the uh you know the uh, uh core fighter and yeah it's very simple you can just take this thing apart and replace that so let's go and go ahead and do that there we go so we have that There we go. Okay, and here's the uh, pseudo core block. You know, it's it's something. <laughs> this would be nicer if you paint it. 
they act they definitely went cheap with this thing though it's a little disappointing okay so there we go so if you don't want to display this kit with the uh, you know without with the core fighter out you can have the core fighter store in here like so and just push this in here like that oops There we go. I think I'm doing something wrong here. There we go. So you can display with the pilot. You can see Amro in there, just like this. And then, let's go ahead and plug this in. I wouldn't say this makes it a more solid connection. You can just see that there's a the pilot in there. Versus uh, not having the pilot in there. This is kind of a weird look, but you can open up the hatch section and you can see Amro in there. Yeah. Oops. And you also have a gimmick here to open this up, the hatch door. It's kind of tricky, but you can do it. I can do it. There we go. Go open this up a little bit. And you can see the pilot. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, I'm not really sure if this is something I actually care about. But maybe some people do. And, yeah, this thing is problematic, man. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> Oh, and the V-fin came off. Fantastic. Okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and just not use this. <laughs> yeah, from what I understand, everybody's saying, uh, you know, if you want something that doesn't fall apart on you, not loosey-goosey, go with the origin. Uh, version of the uh, Master Grade. It came out after this kit. I think Bandai realized uh, what a mess this kit is, so they decided to release another one immediately after <laughs> they did this one. And you know, it's the 40th anniversary is coming soon. Uh, people are saying that we might be getting a 4.0, and hopefully uh, they learn from their mistakes from this guy. And, you know, give us something better for the 4.0. You know, the way you see how they do the uh, real grades these days, you know, I think the technology has finally uh, caught up. So, they definitely will be able to give us something that probably look even better. And, you know, just and stay together much, much better than this mess. Okay, so the head has the LED gimmick. So, basically, uh, you just have to pull up this whole entire section. You know, it's funny, like some parts are loose and easy to take apart, and then the part that's supposed to be easy to take apart isn't easy to take apart. So it's, that's annoying. So you can put the LED unit in here. I mean, the kit is still very nicely detailed. It's just, oh my god, this core block section is a joke, man. I mean, look at that. It makes the kit super flimsy in the middle. And uh, these shoulders are not very good. Well, it, it's kind of exactly the same thing you would expect from a real gray kit. So, that's terrible. The, uh, the emotional manipulator isn't so great. Uh, it's solid though, I have to give, give it credit for that. And uh, the problem is all right here. This thing is the thing that pissed me off. These are super stupid full stickers. Uh, you just have to watch the build video to see how they put, go in. How they come together. It's absolute garbage, and this one is already uh, kind of getting loose on me, so. I asked the owner, he's like, he doesn't care, whatever. As long as it's in there, you know, he's, he's not really going to be bothered by it. If he's so bothered by it, he's probably going to take it apart and repaint it himself. So, yeah. It's not going to bother me anymore about, uh, you know, the, uh... I think he should be overall very happy with the construction, consider, uh... You know, he has experience with these real gray style stickers. These are these foils are just terrible, absolutely terrible. 
and they're just upscale for this mesh grid. All right, so let's go over the articulation, which is okay. It's surprisingly though not as good as the origin version of the uh, master grid, but it still gets some pretty uh, good articulation. And mostly, the articulation complements the uh, uh, the part separation, which I guess is the main selling point of this kit. So obviously, you got uh, the toe art feet articulation here, very real gray like. Got a ball joint here for the feet. So you can rotate that. You got another point of articulation here for the uh, back feet section. The ankle armor can go up and down. And we have uh, part separation right here, which is you know activated when you articulate the feet, which is very nice. Then uh, got this very nice articulation here. Uh, when you bend the knee more than 90 degrees, double joint the knee, you get all these part separation. This look superior to, uh, you know, the uh, the origin kit, the origin version of the RX-78. You see all these armor separation, which is very nice. I really like that. Even the knee armor like comes apart when you're trying to articulate it. So that's great. Uh, you know, each and every one of the skirt are on a ball joint, so you can articulate those very nicely detailed. We've got the hip section. Hips can go. It can kick forward. Obviously, it's a universal joint, so the leg can go out. Um, I guess if you move the uh, side skirt, you can do the split if you want to. We got the thigh cut. We also got the connection point right here for the action base connector. Obviously, we got the uh, uh, connection port point here for the uh, for the back skirt, and that can easily be put away. This is not a tool here, but you know, since it came off, I'm like, okay, you know what? I might as well use it to my advantage. And like I said, it's very loosey goosey, so the leg just came apart on me, which uh, it's kind of irritating to be honest with you. But oh my gosh, do I really want to do this on screen? There we go. That's covered up. You can see this thing just pegs in right there. Okay, so yeah, this this piece likes to come off. Probably a good idea to glue it in. It it doesn't really serve any other purpose if it's uh, glued anyway. Uh, we have the waist articulation. Obviously, it's kind of hinder clashes with the side skirt right there. Uh, we do have an ab crunch. Surprisingly, even with a core block, so that's good. You can open up the hatch right here. The head is on the double ball joint, kind of like your typical real uh, high grade. Uh, the ball joint, the, the neck joint in there is actually clear plastic, so it's light piping, so the light can go into the head. Head can rotate 360. We got a very unique lead design shoulder joint right here. That's actually very good, and the sh uh, parts of the armor can move. And the uh, shoulder armor is just sandwiched in there, just like a real great kit. So, yeah, you can have it floaty. It's basically floaty. And, yeah, uh, the armor can move around like that. It's really nothing to write home about. I mean, it's got part separation. It's very nice looking, but it's it's got all the inherited problem of uh, that of a real great. I think a lot of master grade kits are attached this way too, so you know just know what to expect. Uh, the arm can go perpendicular like that. Uh, obviously, with this gimmick, you can swing the shoulder forward if you uh, you know mess around with the shoulder armor a little bit. If you're not, then oh boy. You can see this is how it's attached. This is a poly cap, and here's a ball joint, and it just goes in there like that. Really, nothing to worry about. Arm go perpendicular. We got the bicep swivel. It's it's kind of, it's uh, yeah, it's not the best design to be honest with you. Okay, get that in place. Double joint the elbow is fine. Uh, you just have to deal with these stupid ass joint parts, which you know what I I I will never ever stop complaining about these really shitty foil stickers. So anyway, it doesn't really matter. We got the uh, 
we got a uh, wrist articulation here you can go up and down and arm uh, the hand is on the ball joint or these uh, emotion manipulators on the ball joint I don't know what's going on here with this hand there we go yeah that, that works the arm can reach all the way back to grab his beam saber if it wants to so that's nice overall it's a it's a very nice looking kit and if you're okay with all the uh, problems you know real grease style problems then you should be okay with this kit it's it's yeah it's kind of had like the same issue what you would expect with a real gray a lot of people say oh it looks great it's fine as long as you don't touch it yeah if you don't want to touch this thing you want to put it in the display it's fine uh i'm not saying well you you can still mess around with it quite a bit you know it's really not it's not like a super grenade that's gonna just explode on you if you're a little bit careful but it's don't expect it to be super solid like the uh, some of the other kits. I think it's probably even less solid than the 2.0 due to you know just having way too much parts and stuff like that. Um, okay, well the thrusters. I also when I build the uh, thrusters, I actually uh, the backpack I actually build it wrong. So let me just show you that you get some articulation here for the back thrusters, and then you get these articulation right here for that. And the connection point on the back, on the backpack, you can actually hide that if you don't want to uh, just play it with the connection point, like that. So, yeah, and this is movable. It's on the ball joint. Yeah, uh, I I think if you can get this kit for twenty five bucks or thirty bucks, definitely jump on it. It's a no brainer. Just exercise lots and lots of patience to put this kit together. You know, don't be afraid to spend like a week or month or more to put this thing together just take your time especially with these parts I highly recommend just painting them don't deal with the freaking full stickers you would be happy when if you do that instead alright so for my first master grade kit I say um, you know I don't, I don't really hate master grades as much as I do anymore with uh, my first one being the uh, RX 79 uh, master grade that's a really old kit. It's got like poly caps all over the place. The engineering has definitely uh, evolved over the years. Really like the one, uh, you know, all the design they put into this kit. And I think it's just getting better. Uh, the second one I built is a unicorn. And that unicorn, it's, uh, it's, it's terrible. It looks great, but it's terrible. Basically, it's just another statue. And you can't really do anything with that unicorn without the whole thing like becoming a super grenade. That is definition of a grenade right there. That's that thing is freaking terrible. But yeah, just avoid fine. I'm hoping they would do a 2.0 at some point and fix all the issues. But yeah, if uh, if there's a master grade that I would recommend avoiding, it's that master grade unicorn and maybe some of the old master grades. To be honest, I think the older master grades, uh, some people are getting them for like you know 25, 30 bucks. They're not worth that kind of money. If uh, I would say pay like ten dollars, less than ten dollars for those uh, old ass uh, master grades, dating back, uh, you know, all all the ones are pre like two thousand eight. Yeah, don't pay more than ten dollars for it. All right, and that's pretty much it for this review. I hope you guys find the information helpful. Thanks for watching.